Right, after mixed performances during our preseason tour of America so far, the acid test is now here because on Saturday, Chelsea take on Manchester City, which means Enzo Maresca will be going head to head with his former mentor, Pep Guardiola, and Chelsea will be facing Premier League opposition for the first time on this preseason tour. And I'm sure quite a few of you will be assuming that Manchester City should just be favourites in this game, and there shouldn't be any debate about that. That, but I am not too sure at all. Oh, I believe that the form on this preseason tour will be quite concerning at the moment for Manchester City fans. You know, Chelsea came in for a fair bit of stick after we failed to beat Celtic, but Manchester City also failed to beat Celtic. Manchester City also were beaten by AC Milan, and in their last game, obviously in normal time, they drew with Barcelona. They lost a penalty shootout. It doesn't really mean that much, but what I'm saying is, despite the fact that they've clearly mixed in higher level opposition, than Chelsea have, they are by no means firing on all cylinders. And I believe this is a good time to be playing Manchester City. And when you look at the amount of talent that Enzo Maresca now has at his disposal to pick from, it is a far cry from what Manchester City have. Chelsea are still without the likes of Cole Palmer, Conor Gallagher, Mark Kukurea. However, they are without so many less players than Manchester City are missing because of the fact that there were many major international tournaments, a lot of Manchester City's players have still not linked up with the squad. Also, they're still carrying a lot of injuries and therefore, when you look at the likes of Grealish, Haaland, Vardio, Edison, who are now in the Manchester City squad at the moment, apart from those guys, there's a real drop in experience and, let's be honest, in quality also. Listen, we shipped two goals against Wrexham, we shipped four goals against Celtic, so it's not great reading defensively, but I'd still rather be going Going into this one with our defence rather than Manchester City's defence, which is compiled of Gvardiol, who's playing centre back, which is where he used to play, but last season he was playing at full back. A couple of kids in there as well, and they've even drafted in Calvin Phillips as a makeshift centre back in there. I would much rather have Tosin Adarabio, Reese James, Wesley Fofana, Benoit Badiashil, and then the other players that we have got at our disposal to pick from. And despite the fact that Enzo Maresca and the boys will understand that this is a weakened Manchester City side, I don't see any way how getting a win over Manchester City in this game can't do wonders for our confidence, knowing that in only a couple of weeks, we take to Stamford Bridge to take these lot on again as part of the opening day of the Premier League season. So without any further ado, I'm going to give you guys my starting lineup for this game against Manchester City. But people, before we get into all that, welcome back to the the Joey Knight podcast. If you are new around here at the end of the video, if you like the content and you want to see more from myself, please hit that subscribe button. We are closing in. We're literally, what, a couple of hundred now away from a hundred thousand subscribers. It's going to be absolutely mental when I hit that hundred thousand subscribers. And when a couple of weeks ago, I set myself and you guys the target to help me hit it before the start of the Premier League season, I thought that maybe I was biting off more than I could chew. And I thought that maybe I wouldn't actually get there in time. But I tell you, what if it keeps going the way it's going we're gonna get there in time we are so so close to a hundred thousand subscribers right now and i am buzzing about that so thank you so much hit the like on the video let's get into it and have a look at the team that i'm starting off with so here you go you can see it on screen now let's start from the back and move our way up starting off with the new boy the man that a few people are saying i look a little bit like can't see it myself but i'm not too sure jorgensen i am gonna start him off in goal we saw about 45 minutes from him against Club America and despite not really seeing what his actual saving ability, shot stopping ability is like, I was fairly impressed by his ability to play out from the back. Now remember I want to make this clear, I do not have a problem with keepers that play out from the back. I have a problem with keepers that try to play out from the back that aren't equipped to be able to do so. So a lot of the time I was looking at Robert Sanchez's distribution, Robert Sanchez's judgement and timing with his passing out from the back and to say there was a lot left to the imagination would be an understatement. Sometimes it was horrific. Now, what I saw from Jorgensen so far actually puts him somewhat in the same mould as Robert Sanchez for me in terms of a goalkeeper that is very confident in playing out from the back. But confident and competence may sound the same, but they are two different things, my friend, and you need to be competent at doing it. But before we get into all that, I just want to take this opportunity to enlighten you, Mr. 
Josh the what? best day. We all know that sometimes I can have a little bit of a mental block when I'm prepping, when I'm on the computer. I prefer the talking. One thing I've been using lately that has helped me is this little bad boy. What is that? And that is my supreme life lion's mane. What's okay? lion's mane? So lion's mane is actually a form of mushroom and the Chinese use it for medicine. I sat down the other day. I took one of my lion's mane capsules. I had a few notes to make and I had about one video to prep for, right? It's usually going to take me about half hour. Within 20 minutes, I had prepped for three videos. My focus was off the charts. I'm taking them in capsule form at the moment. Once, yep. three times a day. I know a lot of people that struggle with taking paracetamol, things like that, tablets. If you're not into it, they don't just do it in capsule form. They do it in drops. They do it in gummy bears. We all like a gummy oh, bear, don't we? What, so basically a sweetie? You can have a, a ba sweetie. Basically a sweetie. Weren't you talking about your recovery as well when you're training? I'm actually using the Supreme CBD for my recovery. When I come home from the gym, it's very hard to unwind and just chill. Mm. So I just take a couple of drops, actually. Not only does it give me a perfect night's sleep, right? But just like stress levels, anxiety... It's, it can sound a bit silly, but just being a little bit better mentally equipped to take on the day. And there's no THC in any of that. So no you're, not getting, you're not getting high or no, anything. No, you're not getting high. There's yeah, no yeah. THC. THC yeah. is what would get you high. Yeah. Whereas this just relaxes your body, soothes your mind, just gets you in a really good mental place. What so, about inflammation and things like that? Do you reckon it sort of like cools you down, like you, you deal mate, with recovery bear? It does it all. Yeah, it yeah. It does it all. Oh, I've actually got a link in the description to this video. That will take you to their website, but you know what else it will do? I've heard there's a discount involved. Mate, they care about our mind, body and soul, and that is why 40% off Supreme CBD or Supreme Life products with the link in my description. So far, what we've seen from Jorgensen is he actually does look good at doing it. There was one moment, I think one moment, when he gave the ball away from playing out from the back, but the position he gave it away was a defender who was just about coming into our half, right? It wasn't like Robert Sanchez against Fulham when he literally passes to a defender in his box and things like that, okay? So the distribution looked a little bit better by Jorgensen, but I will admit that we'll only really see the quality of it and just how cool and calm under pressure he can keep as we move forward but so far so good and almost really good because he nearly got the assist assist didn't he, he looped a lovely ball over the top where he was looking for Amanda Broha Noni Madawaki ends up cutting through getting it puts it over to Broha Broha misses an absolute sitter which is why you won't see him in my lineup for this match one man you will see in there is Reese James and he is going to retain that position as the right sided centre back in that free I do think that the experimentation we're now seeing with Milo Good Gusto being the inverted fullback is working a lot better. Now, Enzo Maresca would have been very used to inverting the right fullback because for Leicester last season, it was Pereira and that's who he used in that position. And therefore, I can completely understand why he opted to use Reese James there at the start. But I think that it's always going to be the left-hand side that inverts a lot better in this system because we do have Kukurea there. And if not Kukurea, I would say that maybe Malo Gusto has looked a little bit better than Reese James looked in inverting. Tossing Adarabayo. I don't mean to blow my own trumpet here, but I said to all you guys, Tossing will get a lot of minutes for Chelsea Football Club. And at the moment, I would say he has been our best defender on this pre-season tour of America. So we'll see how he looks when the likes of Axel de Sassi come back in. Hopefully, something can happen with Trevor Chalaba and we can get him back in the team and a sale doesn't go through. But I think that may be wishful thinking, to be honest. But in tossing, we have a player that represents great value for money. We got him on a free transfer. The wages aren't that high. But also, I think he's ready for the here and now. He's experienced. And so far, he's taken like a duck to water in this Chelsea team. The only major change in that defence from the last match is I'm going to have Levi Colwell in there over Benoit Badia Shill. I just think that Levi Colwell is a bit more composed on the ball, better range of passing, definitely a little bit quicker, and I would fancy Levi Colwell there instead of Benoit Badiashil in this game. That back line there looks pretty tidy to me, and as I say, if they can keep Haaland out in this game, they'll draw massive confidence in being able to repeat that at Stamford Bridge. Reese James on the right-hand side is probably going to come up against Jack Grealish, who's been playing left wing in this preseason for Manchester City. I would definitely fancy Reese James in that duel there. Now, the pivot 
in midfield, if you want to call it that, is going to be Romeo Lavia paired with Milo Gusto. I'm going to take you lot back to my Thrive or Die video, and I'm going to say that at the minute, one of my predictions is looking like a very, very bad prediction, but I am very happy. Listen, when I get a prediction wrong, um, I'm sometimes happy because often I'll predict things that I don't want to happen. And when we were saying who will thrive or who will dive in an Enzo Maresca system, we said that Melo Gusto is probably more likely to dive than thrive because Melo Gusto, despite showing versatility to be able to play fullback either side, has shown himself to be a more attacking minded fullback. So I would always think that a fullback bombing on would suit Melo Gusto's playing style rather than one inverting into midfield. But in the last game, he looked really good, really, really good in doing so. Romeo Lavia has looked good in every game and Romeo Lavia is a man I'm so, so excited for this season. Not only did he look good in getting stuck about, winning tackles, dispossessing, winning possession, moving it on quickly, his creativity, his distribution, his ability to take men on and run past men showed just why Chelsea spent all that money on him. And Romeo Lavia and Christopher Nkunku, it's been said time in, time out now, they are going to be like new signings for Chelsea Football Club this season. Believe me, they're going to have big, big seasons. Kieran Dewsbury Hall, right? And I finally got his name right. I've been calling him Kieran. I have to just... Kieran, Kieran, Kieran. Um, he looked good in his debut, but he had a mixed bag of a debut, didn't he? Because he missed a couple of chances. I'm not going to call them sitters, but they're chances that he would be hoping to be able to convert. So he'd probably be beating himself up a little bit over that. But he did look very creative. He did look very good in there. Josh told me that he is the Conor Gallagher style player. And on that one showing, I'm not sure if I can agree with Josh just yet. So maybe we'll see a little bit more from that. But to me, he looks like a man that's going to be massively, massively attacking minded for us. I think he's going to be very creative. I think he's going to be very important to us. He was bought off and Enzo Fernandez was bought on. But I actually want to see Enzo Fernandez playing alongside him in this match. And I want to see how Enzo Fernandez fares in that role where he's pushed up a little bit further because for me, I believe that the space that Enzo Fernandez will be competing for is the space that we're now seeing Romeo Lavia occupying. The problem Enzo Fernandez is going to have there is Romeo Lavia has looked so good in pre-season so it's going to be hard, price tag or no price tag, to dispossess him from that position. But I want to see Enzo Fernandez pushed up a little bit further in this one. Let's see how his creativity comes when it's not as deep lying that he's positioned. Let's see if he can do it a little bit closer to the goal. Christopher Nkunku, I'm going to have on that right-hand side. Christopher Nkunku has said now in the press conference that I think was today that he doesn't have a preferred position. He's happy to play anywhere. And I think when you look at Enzo Maresca speaking about Christopher Nkunku's ability to almost be the free player, have the have the uh, permission to roam wherever he wants, maybe if we start him over on that wing, what you'll see is actually when Man City have the ball and the fullback inverts back, Enzo Fernandez will drop a little bit further in. He will will then partner Romeo Lavia, and then you'll see Christopher Nkunku come a little bit more central. My favourite moments from Nkunku so far have been when he started off in a more central position. But one thing I do know is when you look at the fact of Kieran Dewsbury Hall, the way he's looking creatively, Cole Palmer, Christopher Nkunku, mate, Chelsea could take this Premier League by storm this season if it goes right for us. I'm not saying it's gonna, but if it goes right for us and if the boys get used to this Maresca system quickly, we're going to have such a good season, man. Mark Yu is going to keep his place up top. Definitely want to see him in there over Amanda Broha. Really impressed by him so far. Wouldn't be surprised if he could get on the score sheet again. And Raheem Sterling. Now, Raheem Sterling had a mixed season last time out, but in pre-season, he looks pretty good. And against Manchester City, he's also always pretty good. He absolutely ripped Carl Walker to pieces at Stamford Bridge. And even when he had somewhat fallen out of favour, he came back into the lineup at the Etihad against Manchester City, and he was the man to score the goal that help Chelsea get a well-deserved point there. So that is going to be the starting lineup that I am going to go with. And you know what? When I started prepping for this video, right? I started delving a little bit deeper into Manchester City's pre-season performances, doing some extensive research, as my friend Josh Aveste would say. And I could be setting myself up for a fall here, but I've got to be completely honest. I always try and keep it real with you, even if I know it could come back to bite me in the arse. The more I watch of Manchester City, the less worried I am about them in this match, you know, and the more confident I am that Chelsea should be looking to come away with a win in this game because 
they've honestly just taken the kids away on tour with them, haven't they? Like, they also haven't got much pace. And if we can win the battle in midfield, where I'm guessing they'll probably start Nico O'Reilly, possibly Kovacic, then I think that maybe we can end up leaving Haaland somewhat secluded and isolated up top. If we play how we played against Celtic, then Haaland and Grealish will probably have a field day because we weren't winning the midfield battle there. But if we can do so in this match, then I think that we can really seclude Man City's attack and maybe, maybe we could be looking at another clean sheet here. I don't know if that's way too optimistic. We saw just how good Maresca ball can look against Club America and I'd be surprised if the boys didn't take massive confidence away from that match. You know, there was some really, really good link up play we showed a lot of quality and class in that game and I think that not only in this game can we feel this full strength almost lineup at what we have bearing in mind we obviously don't have Kukura and Cole Palmer in the team at the moment we can also look at the bench in this game and look for the likes of Badi Ashil maybe even De Sassi for Fana for defensive reinforcement if it's needed when Manchester City players start to get tired legs that's when we can throw Noni Madueke into the mix where you know he's going to run at them and you know he's going to test them and take players out of the game and create opportunities and even when we're looking further forward you know we we could possibly end up seeing the likes of Nicholas Jackson coming on in this match. We may even see the likes of Caicedo coming into this match. So I do think that we're going to have a lot of options off of the bench. And if you're Nicholas Jackson, by the way, you're probably going to be looking at the plaudits that Mark Yu is getting at the moment. And you're probably going to be thinking, right, let me come back in here and remind you lot why I feel I should be the first choice number nine for Chelsea this season. And as I say, despite the fact that we're playing the Manchester City B team almost here, they do still have the likes of Haaland in there, the likes of Grealish, Gvardio, Edison. So if we can get a win against them, especially if we can keep Haaland quiet, the defence and the whole Chelsea team will be able to feel that it's a repeatable process at Stamford Bridge when it really matters on the opening day of the Premier League season. One thing Manchester City are going to have going in their favour in this match is when it comes comes to downloading information and preparing for that opening game of the season, Pep Guardiola is going to be able to have a much more clear view on how Chelsea look to set up and how Chelsea are going to play because, as I say, it's only really Kukurea, Caicedo, if he does or doesn't play, Cole Palmer, that are going to come into this lineup now and could feature in there for that first match, whereas you'd be surprised if any more than... Two, maybe three of the players that play for City will be on the pitch on that opening day. So that will go in their favour. But at the same time as that, I'd rather have the things that are going in our favour. I may be setting myself up for a fall here, but I really do think that this Chelsea side are going to get the job done against Manchester City on Saturday. I am going to back a 2-1 win in this game against Manchester City. I want you lot to let me know your thoughts. Let me know who you think's winning this game. Let me know who you would have had in your starting lineup that I didn't have in mind or who I had in mind that you would not be giving minutes to. Thank you once again for all your support on the channel. We're out in America at the moment. It's absolutely mental out here and this is all happening because of you guys. All these opportunities I'm getting all came off the back of me starting up this YouTube channel and you lot are the ones that have helped push it. Help it even more by pushing me to 100k. There might be some of you that are watching this that aren't subscribed so if you're not, it's only one click of a button. Please do it. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Myself and Josh will speak about the Conor Gallagher situation. I want to get him in here alongside me. He's somewhere around here. He's on the same floor as me. He's a few doors down. I should really give him a knock. Um, I want to get him on here and we'll discuss that Conor Gallagher situation. Let let me know your thoughts on it in the comments. I will see you all in the next one.